what they did is that they gave me free range to go out here and make them a lot of money and do a lot of creative stuff. But I didn't do the campaigns, guys, for Agora initially. I did them all for Chad Arrington. So all of the different billboards, all of the different Facebook campaigns, media buys, we purchased them through me because they didn't want it to be associated with the company in case they were blacklisted by your Googles and your Bings and your other network platforms. The marketing industry, bro, has a lot of red tape. Now, if you mess up a campaign or you do something unethical, the fire comes back onto the company. But if you hire a marketing agency, just like what happened with Balenciaga, what can you do? You can blame the marketing agency. So I was the buffer for if things ever went wrong with Agora. I'm the guy that was using bots for them through their company account cards so that when Google came and tried to blacklist them or you had the canned spam act or different type of agencies like the FTC, they would have a fall guy. I never realized this. So that's why it lasted for eight years. I was there from 2011 to 2018. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of budgets, guys, as far as paid acquisitions, buying services, backlinks, all types of search engine type stuff. And I was in a relationship as far as partners with the CEOs of the companies. And they gave me free range to do whatever I wanted as long as they made tons and tons of money. And guys, we made billions of dollars. But I should have been a billionaire. I shouldn't have just been a millionaire. I think the real reason why the shit that I was doing lasted so long was because they couldn't figure out how to have uh, a, a case against me without also compromising themselves. And that's why when you see Chad focus steals from unnamed company, somehow, some way, I don't know how that shit got pulled off because there's no way <laughs> nobody, you understand what I'm saying? It's just, it just was an amazing situation because they were, of course, bro, plugged in with somebody. It's no way that that happens, bro, that you get protected. But what I did find out is that they were getting investigated by the FTC. The traffic that I helped bring these guys in, they were selling false advertising and Ponzi scheme products to their clientele. You can go check it out right now. You can type it in Google, I mean, in Google, Agora FTC. They had a multi million dollar case that they lost because we were, they were stealing money from the senior clients. And then I got hit with the same case as Chad Folk was stealing money from them. Um, and so that was like dope. Their story was back page news. My story was the front page viral news everywhere. Quick second, have you ever seen an artist catch some traction and then they start to move? The numbers start to grow, they might even go viral, but then fast forward a year from now, somehow their numbers haven't really grown that much. They dropped back close to the same monthly listeners they had before the traction and viral moment. Well, that's because you have to know how to convert those moments into careers. And we've done this again and again with not only songs, but artists. And so has J.R. McKee, who's been a part of helping artists like Lil Durk, Rod Wave, Justine Sky, and Money Long. And we just did a collab where J.R. McKee does a step-by-step -step breakdown of how he took Money Long from zero to millions of monthly listeners and winning a Grammy over Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, and Jasmine Sullivan. Check out this breakdown while we still have it up. You can check it out at www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the www or it won't work. Again, that's www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Back to the video. Like I told you guys, man, a young black dude, bro, in Wall Street, bro, I didn't, I didn't understand how the financial news world worked at all. All right. I didn't know my worth. All I knew is I had a skill set. When I started with Agora, man, it's a company of thousands and thousands of people. I'm one of the only guys that look like, you know, us that's in the marketing department and making a lot of money for them. Only a few of us had Amex accounts. And when I came into this, I kind of want to provide the imagery guys are like the Wolf of Wall Street. Man, you come in there as fast paced. Niggas is doing the cocaine. They got the strippers like the environment crazy, bro. And you just you, you basically a fish out of water. You like this what it is. So they showing you a lifestyle. But you can't forget, man, that we still young black guys in America. We can't we can't do certain shit that they can do from the jump. And the biggest mistake I made was not joining a company underneath of an LLC and giving myself a layer of protection. Joining a company as an employee, allowing people to upfront you money and then for you to reimburse them on the back end is probably a very bad decision. Whereas going back in my 20s, I would have created an LLC. I would have had the company hire me through a contractor. And I would have taken the budget up front because I would have had protection for myself to go out and be creative. And from the way you're telling it, right? Not only was, were you not stealing money, you were spending money on their behalf to push their company. Facts. But the narrative 
is specifically towards spending money towards your music. So how does that even come up? Like, how does the connection of you and music and that money even happen? Was it somebody looking for a narrative so they could figure out how we can make this sound like it? Uh, you know, well, I think I, I specifically, fellas, think it was genius because um, the headline of me stealing money don't make you ask no other questions. Like that shit is so fucking ridiculous to hear that story about me. Who cares about what else is behind that? Who care who the company is or what's going on? Like that's a headline I've never heard before. You get what I'm saying? That's some shit that nobody ever heard before. How mm -hmm. how how one does a rapper get a, a, a access to that type of money? How if it's an Amex account, guys, and you know that got to be paid off every month? How does this go undetected for years and years and years? The whole the whole the whole situation was bonkers, bro. And I had to really go sit down for the two years I was away and just kind of digest it. Because it's us and it's because of people that got this skin color and I don't want to make it a racial thing, bro. Certain stuff that just make absolutely no sense, bro, they can, it, fly, it flies for us. That's absolutely ridiculous. Now, when you celebrate, like I said, a Wolf of Wall Street and what he did to his clientele and how he got rich and we sensationalized that, that's one thing. When you demonize a young black guy, bro, and say that he stole all his money from these corporate companies and you're looking at what Donald Trump and these guys are doing each and every day, I thought that more people that look like us was going to get on the internet and kind of be like, yo, something they right. I did think that people was going to get on their platforms, like I say, a Charlemagne and certain people and be like, yo, this ain't sounding right. This ain't adding up. You understand what I'm saying? Like, we got the voices, we got the platforms to speak up and be like, yo, something happened with that brother that don't make sense. And uh, I don't know, Sean, man, to this day, bro, it's still weird, bro. And like I said, the guys that I was working with, all of the young white brothers that was executives, man, they got immunity. None of them was ever charged, man. You see, I got an entire case. There is no YSL as part of my case. There's no me telling on anybody. It's me pleading out to a wire fraud conspiracy which I didn't plea out to wire fraud. I didn't plea out to that identity theft, which if those were cases, they're not gonna drop those in a federal situation. And I got out of prison, yo, in two years at the multi-million dollars worth of supposed fraud. You understand what I'm saying? So bro, we all know shit was shaky, but it's the it's the, it's the the game, bro. They said they said Irv Gotti was uh, funding murder ink, yo, with supreme money. Like this is the type of shit that they hit us with and people believe it and it just come with the territory, you feel me? <laughs> think about yeah. it bro i mean yeah the fact you throw that in there that's that, that's funny that's funny all right what's your what's your perspective of that situation since since you mentioned that one yo i'll tell you this i you know the documentary was dope right like getting to see the documentary watching it watching it with the on the compound with all the homies like prison is a weird experience man it's a weird weird experience the people on the inside love the guys from our culture that have overcome some of the you know you know, the biggest injustice. So I'm a Irv Gotti fan forever, bro. I think that he was at the height of, of, of what he was doing, but I also know that we guilty by association. So you can come back and put yourself in position. And if you try to put other people in position and they don't, it don't uh, uh, match up to, to, to the vision of the higher ups, yo, they gonna shoot you down, bro. So Irv, Irv, get, Irv get, felt like he was too powerful and, 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 and they had to come and humble him. And I'll be honest with you, Chad, focused thought that he was extremely powerful, bro. When you got all that intellect and all these resources, you don't realize, yo, that you're a millionaire today and you could be dead broke tomorrow. Almost like what they did to Kanye West. You could be a billionaire on Tuesday, bro, and be worth $400 million on, on Thursday. And, and that just goes to show you, bro, that, you know, we still ain't at a place yet, bro, where we can go ahead and, you know, speak freely and move freely. We got to still be very cautious of our platforms and everything that we got going on, bro.